Yes, what's going on? It's your boy Lil Kana, and I'm a six music artist in residence. Today I've come to the legendary Made of L Studios to break down some of my tracks from my new album Hugo. I'm with my producer Quez and my good friend and engineer Nick Mills. I'm taking you on the Access All Areas tour behind the scenes to show you how I create beats, loops, and lyrics, and essentially show you how I make up my music. This is six music artist in residence. Triple A with Law Khan. Listen, I, let me tell you what I hate. Everything I ain't. Yo, so on, just invite people. Yo. Ah, oh, oh, no way. Oh, my days. You signing? No more. Have you have you seen one of them? Like what? What the design was for them? Uh, no, I've only seen the artwork. I'm not seeing it. I don't want to open it up. Oh, okay. it. No, man, come on. That is mad. You've got to do the trick where you like, so done it. you know, you take the thing, you know, this, and then you can't open it without taking oh, it from yeah, paper. Yeah. Oh. You've got, you got, got to see the size of the poster. <laughs> yeah, it's a scary one, so. Okay. Isn't it? That's fucking mad. Crazy. That's so crazy. I'm actually watching. It's so big. <laughs> All the way from the sun. Let's start with hate. P just play the sample, like the opening sample. Yeah, the original sample. Basically, Matt sent me this. It's a pointed unto man who wants to die. But the sample is the singing Poirot family. Singing Poirot family now. And Poirot all we did was put it into, it was yeah, into your, what was it? Organelle, wasn't it? Organelle, yeah. Into Organelle and then reversed it. Sped it up, slowed it down. All of the above. Oh, you sent it to in reverse. But did we take the song from, like, rip it and bought it le legally? Oh, yeah, no, it was all, it was all above forward. Once yeah. we... It's weird hearing it without the drums coming. Yeah, that. This is crank up. You did drums. No, Matt did Matt drums. Did drums. Then, then you I did drums. And then, then Spaven came in and played on it. Might as well yeah. play the drums. Yeah. Rich's but drums. Rich's drums. Yeah, you can play it with the with the intro if you can. Cool. Because this it? this was the bit where it was like that's when I finally was able to write to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because before. It was a bit lot faster when we, the original drums were on it, and it yeah. was like a little bit more skiffy. Yeah. We slowed it down for Rich, and then as Rich started to play it, I started to write to it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's when we kind of found like the space for the chorus had like the the, the pre-chorus bit that we take we took out in the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it sort of started to structure itself then. Really, yeah, because obviously yeah. you would come in with like you know the the chorus bit, and then we could sort of arrange the song around that. It yeah. just became a bit easier. Yeah. After you, you sent me the sample, I, I, I did some further chopping up and. And then I messed with the sound of the drums as well. Yeah, listen, I, let me tell you what I hate. Because we, we knew that it was supposed to be the first tune on the album, we'd sit down after we'd worked on other stuff, we'd be like, okay, right, now let's work in chronological order yeah. and start finishing this. And we just kept getting stuck. Yeah. Because I think before that we were it was kind of trying to set the tone for the whole album. Yeah. But we didn't know what the tone of the whole album yeah. was, not it? Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. so then it could just be anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One moment it was trappy, then the next minute it came back to being super live, stripped back, super busy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here we go. Overload, like being back. Here we go. They're going to be. they going to be lots of these. So apologies in advance. <laughs> Computer can't take it. I'm just going to lose the suction. I'm nice in these speakers, isn't it, man? Isn't it? In, and in this room. Yeah, it's, it's got that it's kind of. Really nice. What was the big? The big. What was the drums we were talking about? Was um on on the Justin the Justin Timberlake album. Oh, the, yeah. Pharrell, the Pharrell oh, drums. Yeah. <laughs> like I love you. Like I love you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Drums. <laughs> drums. Dancing when we do these drums. Yeah, um, <laughs> the big way, Justin. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh yeah, that's something we should definitely speak about as well. It's Justin Timberlake's dance moves in that video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because nice everyone's so focused on what um, Pharrell, Pharrell doing. Williams doing at that time. No one knows that Justin's doing, doing the like. He's <laughs> doing like. He's just. Oh my gosh. He's got the kicks here. Yeah. That was a whole lot of the drum sound was, for the most part, yeah. just in that crush mic. Yeah, crush like, mic. Just basically one mic, capturing mm -hmm. the whole Captain kit. The whole kit. Mm -hmm. Compre like way, just really over compressed. Making it sound really gnarly. That kind of like I love you sound. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that tended to be the sort of like uh, marker really for like drums across the record. Yeah. That was the whole point of it though, is it was supposed to sound like we were listening to what, like a lot of D'Angelo, yeah, do you know what yeah. I mean? Kendrick for sure, yeah. but not Chili Peppers, whatever, like things that sounded like they happened all in one room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for it to be believable, you didn't want it to feel like the kick drum's coming from here and then yeah, 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 the snare's yeah. coming from here and the hi-hat's up. Like you wanted sure. to feel like you were just submerged in a room. I mean, Rage Against the Machine was, was a clear and obvious influence on this. Because I, 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 I was like so unaware of them. I'd stepped on them. And I know they're bait. Every time I say it, everyone looks at me like such an obvious thing. But I just loved like the anarchy and the anti-establishment and, and just like the like how abrasive it was, how urgent it was, you know? It's so like Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, yo, listen. That's um thing on the bass. Um El Saga, shout out to El Saga. Yeah, yeah. Legends. It, yeah, and on the key, is it that's you know that's you on the keys, isn't it? Me on the keys, him on the bass. Bling bling. Yeah. Bling. Yeah. Oh sorry. Yeah. Um <laughs> yeah, it's, I think it was just like just following the sample, it's one of those things that like the sample already kind of set out the chords, yeah. didn't it? So I was basically just mimicking it. And then it came, I think, to be honest, it en actually ended up being like noodling for ages and it ended up just being a chop. Yeah. And so it just kind of like, like the one, the loop. Within the sample sort of thing. So but it was, it was like, meant to lift, just meant to lift it to make it brighter because it was so dark. Exactly. I remember before we, before you added yeah. this in, it was pretty heavy. Yeah, 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 exactly. It was a bit maybe kind of a bit too, uh, yeah. too down the hole, but. That was essentially it. Just mm -hmm. became that loop. Mm -hmm. Just to kind of like, it just needed a little extra lift. Listen, I, let me tell you what I hate. I hate, I hate, I hate. Yeah, everything I ain't. Uh, everything I've done. The whole idea of it was to try and find the beauty in the ugly. Yeah. So, everything. and everything in the song was so ugly. So it was just this little quick moment of relief where, yeah, yeah. you know, where you kind of catch a glimpse. It's like a little bit yeah. of light like, that you see yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, Which, yeah. yeah, when you like see it, kind of to me it was always like, you, see, you know when you see someone or you know that someone's wrong, right? And they're like, but then you see this little flicker of either like why, they, why they're doing it. Yeah, it's always more complex than like lets on. Like, in the, like when you hear this track, it's like, it's big, it's loud, it's angry. And it's yeah. like, well, not really. Mm. It's more just like explaining mm. uh, things that get on your nerves or that you hate, but you don't know why mm. you feel that way at that time. There might be any number of reasons why you feel that. And it was just, I think that was a, yeah. it was important to inject that into the track a little yeah. bit, that it's not like, you know. But that's the thing is that it's rooted in fear. That's why the second verse, that was the bit that we did agonize over as well, was to try and to, to give it context because it wasn't about just being hateful. It's like hate is rooted in fear. So yeah, it's like, you know, you hate what you fear and you fear what you don't understand. I hate the way that you were saying I'd be great. I, yeah, let me tell you what I love. That there's no one above. The thought it is what it is. Same thought it was what it was. He does this bass riff, which I'm sure like right before the chorus hits. Oh yeah, pull it up. What's the best? Do 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 do. So dope. And I think didn't you like emphasize that with like extra synths and stuff? Yeah, I did some synths underneath. Yeah. Pull that, pull that up if you can. That bit is so beautiful. It's one of my favorite bits because it's just so rich and warm as well. Yeah. Too much, man. Yeah, I feel the colour of my kin. Yo, I still feel the trouble that's within. They said that it was all that I could be if I was black. They all maybe rap, and they would say it like a fact. I remember losing that bit, losing the bass for a little bit because we put in that whole other section. Oh yeah, where yeah, Quez yeah. brought in the choir because I was like, oh, there should be, it should be even more epic. We should yeah, have a choir yeah. in here and whatever. Go really ethereal. And it just didn't, yeah, it just didn't work because it, it, it took you too far away from the world that we had already set up. Exactly. Yeah. Was this the sim? So 
the stuff going on during the second verse. The, what? The, in it? No, the lead up to <laughs> I've never heard that before. Yeah. That's in there? Yeah. Yo, this is a thing. This is a thing. <laughs> Where is that? Where is that? Yeah, so. You know that was neat. I've never, I've never, I've, I've never noticed it. I've just never noticed it. <laughs> Quizification. That's that, that was the whole process. That's my favorite thing, though. Is that, like, there's so many parts of all these songs that I don't even know. Because Quiz is the greatest producer of all time. No question. No, come on. Pretty much all of the songs on this were written then and there, right? In the bulk. Yeah. There was not. There wasn't really much. Me going, I'm gonna take this away and write to it. Yeah. Now I've got the beat. That's yeah. crazy because yeah. that's never. It was never like that. It's the difference of having people come in, musicians come in. You know, Alpha and Spaven and all these people, mm -hmm. and obviously they come and they offer something. They do their thing. Uh, yeah. You know, in real time on the day, and then mm -hmm. you almost like it was, it was a weird thing at first because yeah. obviously, well, you know, you need to offer up your yeah your contribution, yeah. and it was like kind of like okay, well, I'll just do that. But then you started to get in the swing mm -hmm. of it so much more, and then you would just mm -hmm. pen something in like. 15, 20 minutes. And it was so nice. And I think that's why a lot of the, why a lot of it came out the way it came out, because it was such a safe space to just go, oh, this is this is what I'm offering into yeah. this jam, yeah, essentially. Yeah, yeah. But I was in such a bad spot at the beginning, like in my head. And I, I remember like how nice it felt to have this song just as a catharsis to rap in the car. Mm. That was essentially the only pretty much the only reason I made it at first. And the only reason why I think I put it out was because I saw how much like comfort and support it gave me because mm. every time I was jumping when I, when I was like fully on the edge I would just get in the whip and put it on and just shout it over and over yeah, and over again yeah. just play it like 20 times and then Quez because the whole conversation was about Anthony Kiedis and you know all these people like legendary writers that don't really care about form and structure mm. and so I remember both of you but it was you like you were heavy on me for it was just like you can say you can say more with less yeah. like less words refine it like take words take words out I think that was probably the biggest gift that you gave me on this. And you gave me a lot of gifts. But that one was like, because it really helped, especially with this opening thing. And it's happened when we played, when we played shows already, when we played this song, it does exactly what I always wanted it to do. Because there's so few words, mm. people know them yeah, and they're yeah, able yeah. to like shout them back. And you yeah. can see that it, like, because it's not so deeply explained, they can put their own they have the space grief to it. To it. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, let me tell you what I hate, mm -hmm. yeah. not just me. Yeah, man. And I guess it's just like, you just know when it's finished, really. Mm. It's kind of, it's just like that kind of emotive kind of, all the way from so, some Sun Ra. All the way from the sun. This, I think it's called The Sun One by Sun Ra. But yeah, there was just a lot of talk. I guess throughout the whole album, was kind of interested in this, like a few Greek myths, and one of them being like, uh, like Icarus. Like yeah, there was a whole a whole conversation around the sun, me having a son, all of us having family, and like you know, children mm. in in different ways. Because you were, it was like about to happen. Yeah, Quez was leading the charge with all the wisdom and knowledge. Yeah, yeah. And I was like shattered <laughs> <laughs> in the middle. <laughs> we didn't do loads of crazy all nighters as well, which I quite liked. No, we're on we're on responsible yeah, time. Strict schedule, yeah. dad time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everyone was getting back for six for the yeah. for yeah. the bath time. I see it. Yeah. Rock and roll, isn't it? It works so well with the video as well. That 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 kind of ending mm. that ending scene with the car going off in mm. the mm. distance. It's crazy, my dad's car, man. Hugo. Yeah. And then all the grading, the way the sky looks and everything yeah, is, yeah. Is, is is perfect. And it sounds like it because the song is red and like glowing and yeah, burning yeah. and heavy. Do you know what I mean? And it just made if you can get out of that. Because that's the whole idea of it is, you know, the whole idea of the album is how you can move away from this, like, this chip on your shoulder, this hate, this, like, pit in your stomach. Yeah, it kind of sounds like that, innit? It's like, yo, you've made it out of that bit. Yeah, it's like yeah, level yeah. one complete. All the way from the sun. With the hard cut as well, it's always about, yeah. like, oh, you've, you've escaped. Yeah. All the way yeah. from the sun. Yeah, yeah. right, right, like, like yeah. it's like a black hole and the, like that's every, everything's getting eaten by it and you just, yeah. 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 Come on. Respect. 